where should we start? <laughs> Hold on a sec. I'm waiting, I'm waiting to make sure I'm live. Testing, testing, are you live? Go live. Go live. Let's see, here we go. Come on. I think we're... Hello. Testing, testing, are you live? R.I.P. Go live. Okay. Go live. Let's see, here we go. Come on. Okay, so... Um, first thing I want to talk about is Tor. Um, I have... I'm a mental patient and there are monitors and the FBI watches and the CIA watches and uh, all my internet is about me and here we have some Tor uh, somebody thinks it's about SPD is my little brother Sean Paul Davis um, so we are going to explain to the nigger what tongues is okay so so there is a uh, um, x80 let's go ahead and do it this way Read timestamp count. Read timestamp count. Move uh, move uh, where it's in AX and DX. So what we want to do is uh, shift uh, right. Uh, RDX 32 and uh, how about move uh, how about this is kind of ugly but uh, how about move RAX EAX Let uh, move. I don't know if that's going to work. Um, and uh, add RDX. RDX. Turn. Okay. Uh, let's uh, call. Get timestamp count, and then let's uh, I, I equals get rx percent comedy. Let's see this now. Okay, I have a one operand and a two operand. And this, I guess we want to up. That doesn't make, that's not what it is. Shit, is it? That's not what it is. <coughs> Shift left. First of all, what am I doing? Okay, son of a bitch. Is it? It's shift left, isn't it? I've used a lot of, I know it's shift left, okay, that takes a immediate, <coughs> oh it's the previous one, the, <coughs> the error reporting is off. <coughs> Let's just move, move EAX, EAX. 
Okay, so um, get get char. Okay, so here's what. Let's unassemble so you get to see what it is. What we can do, just to show off, we can stick this code right here. We can say unassemble function main. So it calls get char calls read timestamp count this is if it's a three gigahertz processor this is three gigahertz this clear okay this let me explain this the clock cycles are an edx eax that's not convenient. So clear high 32 bit. Shift left. Okay. So let's just show that. Okay, so see how that works? Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so now every time I press the. Uh, this is going by 3 gigahertz. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000. You see how it's 3 gigahertz? Okay. And now let's pick a line number out of the Bible. Let's pick a word. Okay. Uh, so uh, U8 star, U8 words, star words. Find num words twenty words num words uh, okay. I don't know if I want to do this. Okay, so, um, Okay, so let's explain something. Uh, in the Bible, they speak in tongues. What they want is for a spirit to puppet them and make them Pinocchio. They want the spirit to make them Pinocchio. Well, that's pretty, that takes, that takes some, what you should do is speak English words without controlling what you're saying. Like if you make a list of words, the first word that pops into your head, that's beginning to be a spirit. Don't say it if it's not English, because it's not going to help anything. So only say English words. So 
what we're going to do is uh, I modulo oops, I modulo num words. Okay. Rich Pope, money smart, dumb sell, Obama, love man, Terry hate, run smart man, run. Okay, so hold on. So let's go ahead and uh, let's print I. to your list let's kick it up to 40 and the trick is you have to hold up your end of the conversation that's it's a covenant that you do an offering Sing. Uh, I'm just gonna print random words Three, four, five, six, seven. We need one more. Uh, God said no weights. Uh, that means no statistical weights. Uh, going to vote for for Trump Mr. God <laughs> I should write it oh yeah
Okay, well, I just want to do that. Okay, so so let's review our program. Uh, we we read the. Th The, the the clock floats around in it's not even constant it's based on temperature um, and uh, so let's put some more words um, let's do 60 uh, what's some good words uh, I need windows Programming, uh, physics, girl, man, uh, top, FBI, CIA. What? What? Oh. FBI, CIA. see how about uh, what I'm doing right now just listing words I think that can be tongues if you if you do it fluidly enough just rattle off as many words as you can off the top of your head and uh, don't don't try and control them I think that'll do tongues um, it's revealing obviously if you uh, reveal your thought processes but anyway Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. What do we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen. Fourteen times five. What is it? Is that right? What is four? Thirteen. Twelve times five. Okay. Okay, so you have to hold up your end of the conversation or God won't talk. It's a covenant. Just doing these words is an offering. One, two, I gotta do two more.
Okay. Uh, programmer. In here. I already said programmer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. There we go. Okay. Sixteen. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. I'd like stained glass windows. <laughs> okay, so we do not have Tor. The retard nigger who is watching me does not understand the concept of God. So the retard nigger thinks that I am a lawbreaker and that he is superior to me. In actual fact, I'm fucking Moses and you're going to suck my... Anyway, fucking nigger. I'm fucking Moses, nigger. Isn't that right, Mr. God? Okay, so... The doctor does not know what a random number is. The doctor is a nigger. So, uh, what we have here is the CIA confusing the poor little citizens. They're saying, uh, source code instead of a wheel. Now, I very carefully explained that everything is just in time in Temple OS. When I hit F5, it doesn't make an executable file. It doesn't make an object file. What it does is it puts code right into memory. Unassemble function. Okay, there's a symbol table on it right there. There's the code. It doesn't put it on to an object file. It doesn't put it in an object file. It doesn't put it on in an executable file. It puts it right into memory really fast because I'm the smartest programmer on earth. I was chosen to make God's temple. I made a 20,000 line compiler and I made everything else with divine intellect. It was the, ins you see how I'm puppeted. You see, do you see this? Is it beginning to make sense? You see how I'm puppeted? Once you understand that I'm puppeted, you begin to understand the inspired word of God. Okay? God puppets big and small. Okay? He controls everything. And the CIA could be snuffed. They could be snuffed. If God had a whim, he could snuff the CIA. So uh, right now they're trying to confuse people. There's a, there's a let's go over here and look at Reddit. An interactive photography page for the understanding of the relationship between f-stop, ISO, and shutter speed. Okay, 
ISO, as in ISO file. OSCD.ISO. You see how they're trying to confuse people? That's what the CIA does. They are a force for darkness and the dark ages and confusion and ignorance. They want ignorance. The CIA wants ignorance. They want really stupid cattle. I don't know why they get their jollies herding dumbass cattle, but the CIA vision of the world is a bunch of dumb fuck cattle. That's what they want. They want dumb fuck cattle. That's Bill Gates wants dumb fuck cattle. He gets his jollies out of herding dumb fuck cattle. I don't know. He gets his jollies out of dumb fuck cattle. That's his. I talk with God all day. That nigger can fuck all the dumb fuck cattle he wants. Anyway, I talk with God. God is clever. Do something witty, Mr. God. Yeah, money. So, uh, anyway, uh, so they're trying to they're trying to confuse people. Um, basically, I am disrupting because I have just in time compiling. Um, everybody else has interpreting. Um, it's kind of weird because I've been talking since the 90s. I might have done it. I don't know. I could be the guilty party. But anyway, like they listened to me then and they listen to me now. But anyway, um, in any case, now it just, let's see. So I have a compiler. I wrote a compiler. I could show you a mini compiler in the in the uh, the demo lectures directory there's a mini compiler the lexical function simply converts numbers into a, a binary number it converts um, uh, operators it, it removes uh, comments and stuff then we're parsing operators okay and uh, if, if the operator is the correct precedence we go ahead and these are doing them this is the multiply operator the div operator the uh, the add operator subtract operator so uh, we can enter an expression 1 plus 2 plus 3 times 4 times 5 now this is uh, it's a stack machine reverse polish so we we push 1 we push 2 we push 3 we push 4 we pop we pop two of them and multiply we push the result we pop two of them and add push the result we pop two of them and uh, so if we're, if we're looking here we push one two three four I think we oh we go to four then we pop three and four and multiply push the result 12 then we pop 12 and two add and we get 14 then we push five then we multiply 14 and 5, and then we push the, uh, 14 and 5 is uh, 70. And then we push the, uh, the 70 and the 1, and then we pop 2 and add. So it's a reverse Polish. This is, this is fucking compiling. This is not an interpreter. This is not byte code. This is machine code right here, x86 machine code. You might ask yourself, what is x86 machine code? You get the architecture manual from Intel, and we can look at how to code an instruction. I wrote an assembler. I wrote a compiler. I did, yes, I did the fucking machine code by hand. I did the front end, the middle end, and the back end because um, I know assembly, I'm a black belt assembly programmer. So what we were just doing is adding two 64-bit register memory and register. So Rex is uh, the 48. Um, oh, there's the register. And what is this? 
oh, this is an add in op code. Um, so it's a it's a 01 um, with the register coded in three bits. This register is uh, coded in three bits. So um, if if it's RAX, it's zero. So it's going to be a 48 zero, and then the RM64, which is uh, you look in a table in the uh, you look in a table for register memory, 16 bit, 32 bit. Okay, so if if you want register memory, uh, if we're doing AX to AX, then it's going to be uh, 0, 0, 0 with 1, 1, and so it's C. Mm -hmm. So the, the final answer is going to be C0. So it's going to be 4801C0 to add RAX, RAX. Oh, we're not doing RAX. Add RAX, RDX. Okay, 48, okay, 03, that's the reverse. Uh, uh, that's the reverse. Um, you can do it one way or the other. Uh, there's two forms. R, the register first, memory second, memory first, register second. So, um, let me go to... Okay. The there's another one with three. There's three. Register first, register first, memory second. And we want DX. So DX is a number, uh, DX is uh, two. I think it's two. DX is two on the, uh, if, you, if you look in the tables, DX is a two. You see that? It's not a three, it's a two. They, the order is different. A, A, C, D, B. So DX is a 2. So I don't remember if we want the 2 here. or It's a 2 and a 0, AX and DX. It's a 2 and a 0. And so a 3 is the opcode, and 2 is DX. And the 0 is the, uh, is the is bits uh, 4, 5, and 6 here. Anyway, so... Um, my compiler is a compiler. It's just in time, and Microsoft is trying to confuse people. Um, if I say who, all the all the functions and symbols that are sitting in my okay, we have uh, okay. We're we're sitting here at the command line. Who? If you say who minus r, just we have i. In the sim, uh, i is an environment variable. It's a, it's a compiler symbol. I equals one plus two. So um, three. Okay. So uh, we can make a function u zero. Uh, let's, okay. I sixty four in. I sixty four i. For i equal one i. I less or equal to n i plus plus percent d comma i. Okay, now we can say count to ten. Okay, we can say unassemble function count. Okay, it's in memory. It's kind of like a Commodore 64 you used to have basic programs in memory. Um, some people, the CIA brainwashes people so that they they can't imagine any other mode of operating than Unix. You don't, you can have code at the command line. So the command line feeds into a C compiler, okay? Guess what? The first task, um, the first task is called Adam, as in Adam and Eve. And when he starts up, like autoexec.bat, he starts compiling this. He starts compiling start OS. He starts compiling this. What does this have? It has some headers. Adam compiles some headers for the compiler and kernel. There's there's two modules, kernel and compiler. Those are ahead of time. Nothing else needs to be ahead of time. 
kernel bin and compiler bin. So we have some header file. We have some headers for those, and then and then we start uh, then we start compiling code. During boot, we compile. There have been fifty thousand lines of code have been compiled at this point. Um, when I if I do a make all, I when I compile the kernel and compiler, another fifty thousand. So fifty thousand is ahead of time in the kernel and compiler. Fifty thousand is um, just in time um, during during boot. If you want to see it boot, here here's a that's a normal boot. That's a, it, it can reboot that fast. I'll do a I'll do a cold boot. If I do reboot my bootloader, that's a normal boot. Now we're going to uh, modify the uh, the startup to print to echo to the screen all the code that it's compiling. So as it compiles, it, as it compiles this make, that that make. Let's go look at that make. The make. The make atom is a bunch of includes. Okay, so when we boot, we're going to do a bunch of includes. We're going to include the header, the headers, and so it's, right now it's including the headers, and then it's starting to compile. This is putting um, code in atoms space. Okay, you know you know how when we compiled a function, it put it in our space. Adam has this in his symbol table. I'm going to undo that because I don't want it. I'm getting rid of the. That's weird. I'm getting rid of the. Okay, I got rid of that. So at this point, the Adam task has all those symbols in his table. And we inherit our parent symbols. So if I say who, this is all my parent symbols. So I never need to do an include file. You, you don't have a, there is no path because uh, the command line uh, feeds into a C compiler and uh, you don't, um, when you, if you type, if I typed uh, test in Unix that would say execute, but that's not what this does. Um, this feeds into a C compiler. To execute it, I have to say pound include. Okay, make this. Does that make sense? Doesn't that make sense? I can hit. I can. I can do a shortcut. I go there and then hit include. But anyway, so I say pound include test. Dot cpp. Dot z. Okay. I have. To, I'm pretty sure. I might have. Did I screw something up in here? No. Okay. I include undefined identifier. We have a. Oh, I have garbage in there. Okay. So now we're now we're executing at the command line. So uh, if we hit Control Alt C, now if we say who, now I don't want my parent symbols, so I say minus R. That's not recursed. So we have uh, we have main, which is here. We have num words, which is here. These are environment variable scope, but they're they they can be functions, they can be global variables, they can be pound defines. Okay, so uh, what else was the evil CIA confusing people on? They brainwash people so that they cannot imagine any other way of operating a computer. We all grew up with the Commodore 64, which you typed in, a, and if it was, if you put a line number, it put it into memory as a basic program. If you did a statement, it executed immediately. Somebody said, um, well, anyway, somebody said it's like a Commodore with uh, the C language instead of basic. There are differences in the syntax, be aware. 
the um, the shift operator is a higher precedence, and uh, you need a you need an address for a function address. Um, you need an ampersand. Anyway, uh, who who was talking? So um, let's go ahead and do a little more tongues. Uh, so we can pick. Let's. Why don't we take the? Uh, oh well, what do you think, Mr. God? Do you like the Commodore 64? We can hit F5. Okay, so uh, let's let's call it a day. So let's see if there's any comments in the uh, stream here. Let's see if there's any comments. In the uh, there's not an off by one. The uh, uh, the block numbers start at two in the. Um, it's not an off by one. Unless you. The boot record. Oh no! It's it's not it's not a. Uh, um, I want absolute blocks. I don't want relative blocks. Um, one of my goals is to uh, eliminate. Uh, I want. Let me. Let's just see what he says. Um, so. Uh, one of my highest goals is eliminating. Whole concepts like uh, mem BIOS rep. So this is a this is this is physical memory reported by the BIOS, and normally um, you map this to virtual memory or virtual memory maps to physical memory, and uh, but we don't have a concept of physical and virtual. There's only one sort of memory address, and that's physical. Everything is physical. So in my uh, in my file system, um, in the FAT file system, there's a concept of clusters and a concept of blocks, and uh, I want to simplify. If I can eliminate a whole concept, a whole um, that makes me happy. I, I like to get rid of abstraction. If I can get rid of abstraction, that that makes me happy. Okay, so. Um, there's a fat table in. Okay, let's do a drive report. <laughs> okay, so this is a drive report. Uh, the colors make it confusing. Okay, so the red C goes from block zero to block uh, whatever. That this is a RAM disk, um, red C RAM disk. Then I have fat 32 hard disk, fat 32 hard disk. So let's go look at the RAM at the Red Sea RAM disk. Um, you know, I could format my partition. I, okay. Well, anyway, so um, drive B. Let me say directory uh, star. This is a full directory, and. We have no files. Let's do Control D. I'm going to copy my home directory over to my RAM disk. Okay. So now I do a directory. I have a home directory. Directory. This is on the RAM. This is on the RAM disk. True reports clusters, except they're blocks. So 
um, <clears throat> with FAT32, you don't allocate blocks. You allocate like 20 blocks at a time. So um, with FAT32, um, the numbering for the cluster starts at uh, at the first at the data area of your. Um, I want blocks, not cluster. I want blocks, not clusters. So um, 102 is okay. So what are we using? Okay. There's a allocation bitmap. If we if we look at how how big our drive is. Uh, well, anyway, let's do this. Class class rep, and then I say letter to block device. Is this gonna work? Letter to block device B. Okay. So the this is the block device. And it says the minimum block is zero, the maximum block. So there's a low level protection that keeps you from going outside of your partition. So it's pretty safe. You if you operate on one partition, it probably won't accidentally kill another one on your hard disk. It'll stay in the partition. Um, that's a pretty low level check. Um, let's go ahead and look at dry. I made it. I was using the word partition and drive, but I got rid of the word partition, and now I just call it drive. So I just just for terminology, if you can eliminate a term, they used to say partition or they used to say drive. Now all I say is drive. So the data area starts at 101. Um, that means we have 100 blocks of allocation bitmap. Um, so somebody says my numbering is off. So according to my, okay, so the first, um, the size is 100001. That's kind of weird. Uh, there's a reason. I could explain it, but it's pretty hard to explain. You want to know why that is? Okay, I can tell you why that is. When you allocate malloc, let's say alloc. Oops. Let's see if we allocate a hundred bytes. Then if we say m size b, we allocated. 104 bytes. Uh, that's the uh, that's the user area. the The system area is 120 bytes for the overhead. M size two. Now, if we allocate a thousand, let's say like this. Okay. Now at this point we. Uh, I think we switched to a power of two plus plus one block. Uh, well, I'll just I'll just tell you that once you start getting up here, it's a power of two plus. Why do I do two blocks? I don't know why I do two blocks. Okay, um, you have some overhead, as you know. When you, when you do an allocation, you have some overhead. Um, so so what I here's what I didn't want. I didn't. Why did I do that? Let's, that's a, I did a dumb example. Zero x. Okay, let's say you were allocating two. The, uh, what is that? Two meg or something? Uh, now it could do four. Which is the next power of two because you need some for your overhead, but what it does instead is a power of two plus I do plus two blocks. I don't know why I do two. Maybe I should change that. I think it would. So I do. So that's where. 
so that overhead would norm I should do one block I'm sorry but I should do one block so the reason we have an, an off by one is uh, the size works out there's an extra block um, and therefore I think uh, that's it's part of the malloc we could we could change that and then it would I'm nervous maybe should I change it is it correct I hate making changes if it's gonna screw something up I don't think it's gonna screw I think it's correct I think I was I don't think I was careful so I'm going to go to the kernel and change it. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. So um, I don't know if I'm going to. I'm just going to put it on the next release. Um, so we go to malloc. And we want to look for. Uh, oh, the slop. I, there's, a, there's a pound defined for this. Um, it's not slop, is it? No, it's not slop. Okay, so we go uh, free hash mem free mem free page somewhere around here. Extra hash pages two. It is common to malloc exact powers of two. There is some overhead. We add two, so a request is not rounded up to the next power of two. Now the reason I might have done this is because maybe you are creating a block pool structure in the block pool structure uh, I don't know I nobody does nobody would do that I'm nervous <sighs> what's gonna happen we're going we might suddenly have extra memory usage okay let's be careful here's what we'll do we will do a cold boot and we will record we will record I'm gonna write down the the memory D five six eight two eight zero zero. okay let's let's reboot it again just to make sure D five D five six eight two eight zero zero. Okay, now I'm going to go to uh, mem, mem x hash page. Now I'm going to, oh, let's, let's try it. Okay, now I'm going to compile my, I'm going to do a make all. This compiles my kernel and my compiler. Now this is I don't have object files. This is a this is directly compiling everything. Does that blow your mind? It's only it's only 20,000 lines. Now I'm going to reboot. And we have our memory says Oh shit. <laughs> okay. So I was good to be cautious. It says CCB6 a400 so I don't quite I don't know what happened uh, that's bad so in other words it got kicked up into another power of two uh, so I should investigate that you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put it on my to-do list uh, to do hard or not worth doing, to do meh, to do, I th I think we'll put it on my actual to do did, I might actually do that someday. <laughs> um, so mem, okay, what do we call that symbol? Mem, okay. So I'm going to make a note, control L, link, man page. Okay, 
So apparently, um, oh, did I change it? Let's go back. Okay, now we're back to D5682. Two e zero zero. Okay, I don't know why. Okay, so um, let's do it again. D five six eight three. Oh, that's not good at all. Why is that changing so much? Son of a bitch. There's a. Uh, D five six eight two E zero zero. So um, I don't know. That's kind of bad, isn't it? So let's go ahead and let's look at. So I think I figured out what that was. What else we have here? Second errors only occurs when the volume is an exact multiple. <sighs> yeah. Here's what it does. Here's what it does. Let me explain. Okay, so so malloc doesn't give you so malloc sometimes gives you more than you ask for. If you say star b equals malloc forty, let's say you do this. Um, let's say let's say forty three thousand. Okay. Now it has to use a power of two. So if, <clears throat> if we say m size, any malloc symbol you can use m size and heap control. So what did it do? It did eighty thousand plus those two uh, pages. So it gave you more than you asked for it because it's dealing with powers of two. Now, when you when you allocate a RAM disk, it disobeys your order, and whatever it got, it uses the full range. Now, this I might have to change this because sometimes you actually want it small. When you're making an ISO file that's an image, you want an exact size. You don't want to round it up. So I I can change this. It makes me uh, well, it kind of sucks, frankly. Doesn't that kind of suck if I change it and then it wastes? It's kind of a it's a nice feature, isn't it? But maybe it's more important to make if you make an ISO file. So uh, if you make an I, an ISO partition, if you make a file that you want to transfer onto a CD-ROM, you want it exact. You don't want uh, the, the full range. Um, that affects the the way it's formatted and stuff. Anyway, what do you think about explosion of compile times caused by include? Now, if it, uh, I don't know what he's talking about. I can yeah we're only doing 9660 we're not doing the other ones they're actually we're not doing I already have 9660 we're going to replace 9660 with Red C so that we only have one file system we're just going to it doesn't need an allocation bitmap for a CD-ROM, but we're gonna um, we're gonna force them to to stick it on there. Do you think having a dynamic language? Now I have I have a just in time compiler. Uh, no, that's we're not doing that. 
you know there's a lot of things you might want but we're this is limited a lot of people like to spread FUD confusion I don't appreciate you mentioning dynamic because that's likely to get people confused that's what a wicked CIA nigger does as he goes around oh like roughly speaking you know I there's the Shakespeare play of Julius Caesar he says I come not to I come I come to praise Caesar not to bury him and in fact he's doing the opposite so we get these CIA niggers who think they're being clever fuck you anyway um so okay